Got it. Somebody need to turn the mics on, back on. All right, here we go. Take two. Hi, you guys. Ginger Cook here with Acrylic Painting Monday. And uh, we're excited to bring you this, um, this tree that's um, cherry blossoms. And we're going to show you a different way to create a tree, some of the rules about making trees so that you don't end up having just look like a little bunch of polka dot dots. So we're going to show you how to create the pattern, how to do this in a little different way than we've shown you before. This almost almost feels um, uh, Japanese, doesn't it? With the yeah, way that um, way that this uh, tree is done. And we're, this is, you know, on YouTube, we try to do different things. So when you tune into our channel, you're going to say, I wonder what Ginger's going to show me today I didn't know before. And that's, I think we're going to cover a lot of stuff like that. We're using a color called Shadow Green, which is this color up in here. I tell you how to make it if you don't know it. That's from Holbein. It was a gift from Liz Clark, and she gave me a whole tube of it. And every once in a while, I feel like I should use it. We're also using something uh, for the branches called uh, Van Dyke Brown in the Golden fluid acrylic any fluid brown would work and we're using a uh, what we call a liner brush which is designed exactly for tree branches and so forth and this is a 9 by 12 canvas and we sometime in the show we said it was 8 by 10 but we lied it really is <laughs> A nine by twelve. We just want to see your paying attention. And we needed enough of the canvas, uh, you know, to do a tree like this and do all these little dots. We needed a big enough canvas where you could really express yourself with that. But I'll tell you what, this tree would be fabulous, thirty by forty, wouldn't it, John? Oh, absolutely. Wouldn't that be just gorgeous in a bedroom, thirty by forty? Yeah. Really take your time with this. Really would be something. So we anyway, start on that next. But we just so many things to paint, and we hope that you're. Um, you're following us as we travel, uh, you know, Norway and England, and I hope you've been following our travels this um, this summer. And and maybe some of you will get to see up there at the Art Sherpa workshop in uh, August up there in Pennsylvania. But um, we'll talk more about that. And in the meantime, uh, let's get our paints out and start painting our uh, cherry blossom cherry blossom tree. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, guys, here we go. On with the show. Okay, so we're going to paint this tree maybe a different way than... We show you. I always have fun showing you different ways to paint things. This is going to be another new way to paint it. But we've got to establish some basics first. First, let me tell you a little bit about the colors. If you haven't made yourself a color chart, these are the ones we use all the time at our YouTube and our Academy videos. And just take a moment and do a still shot after. Come back to this video afterwards and just uh, pause pause it and then write down the how you want to make a... It's on, you know, kind of thick watercolor paper, thick paper, but you want to make yourself a color chart. And this is like Southern Ocean Blue with white, phthalo Blue with white, Ultramarine with white, and so forth. So we're going to be using over here, we've got the... the uh, Holbein uh, Luminous Rose, we've got Cad Yellow, uh, a Cad Red Light, we have Cadmium Orange, we have Marigold, we have Yellow Oxide, we have Cad Yellow Light, we have Magenta, we have Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Raw Umber, which is a translucent color, and then we have something called, from Holbein, we have something called Shadow Green. Now, if you don't have this, you can make yourself a dark green uh, just using ultramarine blue and, say, a yellow oxide and maybe a bit of raw umber. And you'll get a pretty nice shadow green, too. Or even the other way would be to, for instance, maybe black and yellow would make you a pretty nice shadow green with a tiny bit of blue in it. So, you know, a couple ways to make it, but I thought we'd share that with you. Now, before I get any further... It's important to understand that when we're painting a tree, it's not random. For instance, if you have a tree like this, I don't care what kind of tree it is, all right, you've got the light coming down from the top, all right? So usually what happens is that trees come in sort of sections like this. Think of sort of bonsai shapes, right? Okay, maybe something like this. Then there maybe is a shape over here like that. All right, does that make sense? And then when your trunk comes up to it, for instance, and then you've got uh, maybe another branch coming off of here like that. So think about it. Where is it going to be darker? You've got the light coming down from the sky, yes and yes. 
So the lightest part of any tree, whether it's a pink flowering tree like we're going to do, or green leaves or autumn leaves, is going to be lighter. And it's going to be, in this case, in the case of our uh, tree, we've got probably, it's a little bit lighter. Well, it's, it's really the, the light's coming um, kind of, it's definitely coming down here from the top and it's going to hit certain patches of it, like there's going to be a patch here that's a little bit lighter, and then for sure we've got some light up here. But then underneath is where the darker colors are going to be. So you're not just randomly just doing white and dark, just like polka dots. There's a method, and then we're going to have, for instance, underneath here, there's going to be a spot where it's all very light, where the light's hitting the ground here, all right? But there'll be some rocks back here that are kind of, that are more in the shade. This whole area on this side is going to be shadow. All of this side, we've got a big tree here, this will all be dark. So think about when you're planting something, it's not random, okay? So I'm going to put that away now, and you can see where I've got this light, you know, just sort of a pink canvas, on a peach color canvas, just, um, just any shade of kind of a light pink will, will, will work. And I've sort of, I've sketched the tree out, and I'm going to take some uh, burnt umber and a little bit of water on my brush, because the burnt umber is very thick. And I want to go ahead and just uh, paint this tree. Uh, let's see, I'm going to take a little ultramarine blue and burnt umber because I want this darker than I've got it. Look at, see, ultramarine blue is one of the, your, your the fattest, thickest brown. All right, like that. And it, remember, your tree gets fatter as it comes down, so the branches get thinner as they come up. I won't put in all the branches, but... Um, I want to make sure that I've got, this is the basis for this tree. That's, that's where it is, okay? And then the, we're going to say there's some, uh, you know, we're going to have some rocks down in here like this. And I'll just put in a few like that. Just some dark brown areas to indicate where I know my rocks are going to be. All right. So this, you know, if we, if you know, kind of, this is like a little rock map, okay? And take a little bit of yellow oxide, and we'll say we'll have a couple of lighter rocks here, maybe. Won't be quite as dark as those. Okay, all right, so that's, that's where our rocks are going to be, for the most part, for this picture. And then, so we're going to work around this whole background um, and then later I'll put on more branches and, and some highlights on the um, on the tree and so forth. But that's that's basically what I'm going for right now is this. Okay, you guys with me? So let's dry that so that that's my map. Okay, I'm going to dry that because I need that map to be dried. I mean, you got a great start right off the bat. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, and and you think about it. I mean, a lot of times you know, could have raised it up maybe another couple of fingers. If you do it, you might want to raise it up a little bit higher than I did. It's all right. We look pretty balanced between the top and the bottom. But you know, might have liked a little more room. But this first time I've done this too. So what we're going to do is we're going to just one of the debrushes, the debrush uh, from oh, uh, Raphael called uh, Raphael Textura. D brush, and I, I, as referred to as the brush, right? Debrush. brush. The brush. They got and different gonna, sizes of those too. Yeah, they have distance. This is a this is a um, an eight. I think that's the biggest one I have. I don't think I have a bigger one than that. No, I think that's my largest one, yes. which is fine. All right, so we're going to do the background with the brush. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so I'm going to take some white paint, titanium white, and I'm going to come under here like this. And just right next to my tree here, like that. And I know that I've got a tree doing this. So I'm going to take, this is just, just titanium white. But nothing too cra crazy, right? And Just normal crazy. Just normal crazy, right? And uh, uh, we're going to come under here like that. Because we know we want something light over here. 
and it's going to be if it's going to be in the yellows it's got to be lighter right uh, over white as opposed to that and then I want to come up here like this in between these branches and uh, uh, guess now I could have uh, for sure uh, just done, done this background but I might have lost where I was going if I'd done it the other way does that make sense because I know that I've got to come up in this area with my tree and this is where I want my you now my my white and then I've got a little bit of this light coming on this side and this is good too you can always go back over your tree but this is a good way if you got a branch that was a little bit thick this is a good way to um, trim it out see what I've got now I've got some raw umber which remember I told you that's your a transparent color and I've got a little bit of marigold which is also another transparent color and using the brush I'm going to make little circles here and say so I want this area a little bit lighter little circles and not pressure hard and say that's going to be a little bit darker a little bit of uh, uh, raw umber over the white come in here like that Okay, a little bit of raw umber. Raw umber has almost got a yellow feel to it too. So there we go, like that. But raw umber. Okay. Then I'll take some just pure raw umber here and come down. Look at that's the darkest part of the raw umber, right? Wipe off the excess because your brush will hold a lot. You get you buy these at the art Sherpa store. Uh, uh, artsherpa.com and store, right? Well, it's store.artsherpa. Store.artsherpa.com. Artsherpa. Okay. Link so, will be in the description. All right, so then I'm going to take that color. I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna and I'm going to come this way uh, like that. And I'm going to come on this side of our rocks. Do that. Okay. So just sort of kind of just a little bit different than you normally think about us doing a uh, painting like this because we're um, we're kind of going to go around our tree a little bit, right? Now I've got a little bit of, I'm going to take some white. This is zinc white over here. And uh, I might come up here like that next to this part of the tree and suggest that there's some shadows in here like that. Just over here, like that. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to titanium white. Come on up like this to my over my canvas, my pink canvas. The reason I wanted it pink is that pink is a tricky color to get. The light pink. So we've got some good base. This we got some good basic pink in here. So let's come, I'm going to come up about that far. And my brush is somewhat dirty, which is good because now I've got a combination of the kind of the browns up in here. And then I'm going to come this way, taking little circles. And you know, painting is, if the, paint, painting is always more than one layer, but this is a, there's no water on the brush. There's no water on the brush, but this is a great, the reason you like a brush like this is that you can do these, this background, you don't uh, wear it out. It's just, you know, it's got, it's, it's got a beautiful design to be able to do something like this. Okay. Well, it's got the flat side and the curved side. It's got a flat side and a curved side. Yeah. And um, now I'm going to take a little bit more titanium white, just here, like load it up here and just add a little bit more color to this. But probably would be good to have a different, um, have a little drier background to do my next layer. But you can see where, um, you can see where I'm doing that, right? And then as I um, come over into here, I might just um, put a little bit of. Remember, I told you I wanted some light here. Okay, something like that. A little bit of light. Then in this side, I'm going to take a little bit of white and magenta. 
Kind of smudge that out, mostly white, and a little tiny bit of raw umber. So that will gray it out a little bit. I want to come up here to this side of the canvas, like about over in here. I'm going to say that there's a then a little bit of um, a little bit more raw umber right over here, just a little bit more. Very little. It's a very translucent color. Come over in this area here and say that there's our lighter background. This will be a neat effect. It's a neat effect. It's an interesting way to get it, yes? And then I think I want some of that color maybe up in here a little bit. Nothing too drastic, but probably a little bit more white coming down. I can leave some of the background showing. Can you hear the little scratching? I, that's because I'm pushing. If you don't hear the scratching, then I'm not pushing very. I'm not pushing hard, right? I'm pushing harder when you hear the scratching. It's an interesting thing to notice, isn't it, John? Yeah. If you hear a little bit of the scratching. You know, I'm pushing a little bit harder. A little bit of raw umber here. Now, what I want to do is. Um, I mean, that's kind of cool what I've got so far. Um, it's kind of interesting. A, it's interesting. I want to take a, um, that that green color I've got. And uh, let me move my white. That green color that, yeah, oh, there it goes. And a little bit of white with it. Yeah, that, that that's... Um, you know we can't see you. Okay, but I... I <laughs> It's all right. I need a light green color right here, right here. This sort of. Um, so that, what what did you end up using to create? Just white, just white, and that green color, which I told you what it was. Oh, Can't the shadow green. The shadow green. Okay. Yeah. That's the white and shadow green. Just reiterating. Right just reiterating. Sorry, that's the white and shadow green, which I'm going to put right here, and I'm going to put a little bit of raw umber with it. Kind of blend that together. Yes and yes. A little bit more shadow green. A little bit darker here. This is our smoky side of this. Now you see how we've got these soft colors, and that's one of the reasons I wanted that shadow green color, because it's a very soft color. Even when I want to go darker, barely touch it, it's a very, very soft color uh, over here. If I put a little zinc white with it, you can see where um, I need a little bit lighter right up in here. I can have that. Okay. Now, here's our lighter color like that going up. Now this is actually the beginnings of a tree. All right, but we haven't done anything with the tree yet. Now I'm going to change sizes of the brush and get one of these little ones. This is a number four. Using the shadow green color, I'm going to come up like this and skip a bit and just suggest you here's this um, this tree, look at how delicate I can add the leaves just by turning it on its edge. Never be afraid to try new brushes. Um, you may discover, a lot of times artists will get in the habit, well, this is the only brush I'll ever use, I like this, and I'm always willing to try something new because if someone's got something better, I'm lining up, me, I'll try it, let me see what you got, because, you know, you just, you know uh, your handwriting, so to speak, and uh, you know that uh, certain uh, brush movements are going to be easier for you than others. See, I'm just using the edge of it now to, to create these small leaves. Just just tapping it almost. I haven't dried anything yet. I want this dark up at the corner. 
Hey, you didn't wash your brushes at all? Well, this is a brand new brush. I haven't had to wash it at all, right? See what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not washing anything right this minute. I'm just saying that I've got some, some some sort of leaf coming this part of this tree coming this way from here. And then I'll get a little bit of zinc white and uh, just lighten up the edge. Wipe it off like that. A little zinc white. There you go. Just barely touching it. Okay, so that's the that's this sort of that's this delicate tree right here. Wipe it off and then get a little bit something a little darker right here because it's had a chance to dry. And uh, remember, your paintings are all about contrast. And so, for instance, I know that I've got something darker up in this part of the tree, and I might even go to to my burnt umber and and um, browns because I can still load that up and uh, suggest that here's some darker parts of this tree then I want to come down here like this and say that this is something darker right in here like that, see how we're putting this in. It almost has a sumi ink feel to it, doesn't it? Then take a little bit of ultramarine blue in that green, come over here, and suggest something dark right here. Maybe a little zinc white now. Too much, that right, right in there. I'll blend that in. Say this is a little lighter, kind of a little lighter shadow here. It's coming under these rocks. And let's see, let's go back to my dark spot right there. Yeah? And isn't it interesting when you're painting this, for instance, um, again, this is a sort of a, you've got this tree coming up this way, and they'll be, from following this branch, you're going to have something dark right there. Okay? Yes and yes. And um, I'm just trying to think what I can do that still um, makes some sense to everybody. Here's a little bit of lighter right color right in here. Yes and yes. So everything's soft. I want one Everything sort of soft, just soft. And this little brush is great detail with this. Very versatile, kind of a soft, it's a soft little area right in here. Okay, now I'm going to dry this one more time, all right? The Karen Little Scholarship Fund, Empowering Artistic Dreams. At the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, we believe in nurturing and empowering artistic talent, even during times of financial hardship. With the Karen Little Scholarship Fund, we aim to provide a beacon of hope and opportunity for aspiring artists facing financial challenges. This unique scholarship program not only supports the dreams of these artists, but also contributes to their mental well-being and social interactions through our enriching art programs. The Karen Little Scholarship Fund is fueled by the generosity of our donors, and we are proud to match every dollar donated, effectively doubling the impact of each contribution. This enables us to offer financial assistance to even more deserving artists, helping them join our esteemed Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting. By supporting these artists, we also create an environment where they can thrive, learn, and collaborate with their peers, fostering their artistic growth and personal development. Participating in an art program like acrylic painting offers numerous benefits for both mental well-being and social interactions. Creating art can be a therapeutic outlet for self-expression, allowing individuals to channel their emotions and thoughts in a healthy and productive manner. Moreover, art programs provide a supportive community where artists can interact, exchange ideas, and form lasting connections, enhancing their social lives and networks. 
As a token of our appreciation for your generous donations, we are excited to offer you the chance to win an original Ginger Cook painting in a random drawing. For every $25 donated during the quarter, you will receive a ticket that is placed in a fishbowl. At the end of each quarter, we draw four tickets and announce the lucky winners. These exquisite paintings not only serve as a beautiful reminder of your contribution, but also symbolize the lasting impact you have made in the lives of our scholarship recipients. Together, through the Karen Little Scholarship Fund, we can continue to uplift and inspire artists in need, helping them to achieve their dreams and contribute to the vibrant world of art. Your support has the power to change lives, spark creativity, and build a brighter future for the artistic community. So join us in this extraordinary journey of fostering artistic talent and transforming lives, one donation, one artist, and one masterpiece at a time. Please note that the Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, including the Karen Little Scholarship Fund, is not a registered 501c3 organization under the United States Internal Revenue Code. Consequently, any donations made to the Karen Little Scholarship Fund or the Academy are not tax deductible for federal income tax purposes. We sincerely appreciate your support and generosity in helping aspiring artists achieve their dreams through our scholarship program. Drawing rules to participate, you must be 18 years of age or older. Regional rules and conditions apply. Void where prohibited. Disclaimer. The scholarship drawing is not affiliated with YouTube or any Google products in any way at all. All right, so you can, we can see where we're, you know, we're working on getting the depth, right? I'm going to rinse the brushes out a little bit. They rinse well, too. Um, so I know that, for instance, right in here, I'm going to take some um, zinc white and a little bit of marigold. And I want to come in here like this and say I want this to be a little bit lighter. Let's take a little bit of raw umber with that. It's not so bright. Okay. And do I want some of this color? Just wipe it off up in here. Maybe a little bit, but not that much. Take a little raw umber and white and kind of tone that back. There you go. There we go. A little bit of this orange color. That's pretty. Let's just pull a little. Let's pull a little color into this, right? As long as we're doing stuff, I'll just wipe. Just kind of mop that up with a paper towel. There, like that. And then that kind of blurred all that out. See? Okay. So what we want is, I um, want to go back to my white. So I'm going to go back to titanium white, and this needs another coat. You see what's happened? So um, we did it. Um, just circle, just do little circular motions. Don't be going back and forth like this and this. Please don't do that. Make little circular motions that you overlap. Okay, this is our next level of color. All right, so um, and as we add some white and kind of beige in here like that, this is our third level. If you will take the time to do just more than one layer. Um, you will be ever so much happier with your artwork than if you just rely on the first layer that you thought to paint, okay? Here's that, that romber and a little bit of white coming up over here over this pink, okay? Then here's some white and a little bit of luminous rose. That's that pink color. I'm going to come up here in another coat of paint like that. So we are suggesting a tree here by overlapping these colors. All right. And that is key. 
So if I want to say that there's a little bit of this pink coming out here, I can just use the edge of the brush and suggest some leaves into my white like that. Because remember the light's on the top. Remember we talked about that, the lightest colors and the lightest, brightest there on the top. So that might be a little bit too dark. But you can always... Um, Tone it back with another color like that. Okay. So, so far, um, I guess we need to come under, under here with some white and do another little layer of white next to my tree, but it won't be as white. Got a little raw umber in it. Yes. Like that. And I'm going to take a little bit of this light color And I want to tap something in here like that to suggest that there might be a light some peeking through here. Okay. Uh, some raw umber again. We're back to that. I want to come back over this, um, this kind of gold color that we did. Just come across there like that at the bottom. And then I'm going to wipe the brush off and come into titanium and say right in front here, I've got something lighter. Barely touching this now. And it's amazing the depth that you can create in a picture just by layering. I'm going to harp on that a lot, I think, John, because... Um, if I take a little bit of yellow and white and a little raw umber and just come up here and do a few dots of color, just suggest that there's something kind of peeking through. Okay. Now, before we do any more trees, if you like trees, I'm going to just take a moment and show you something. If you like painting trees, we have got, um, we're going to back, John's going to back out. We've got how to paint trees, all kinds of videos on how to paint trees, pine trees and stuff. We've never painted a tree like this, but we've got all kinds of videos on that. But if you like trees and gardens and so forth, um, this is more of a hedge. This is a p painting that's going to be coming up at our academy. You notice these, we've got some trees in the background, but you don't notice we've got a hedge here and then sort of suggested a tree and then the rest is just flowers coming forward on a path. It's a really fun painting to do. Um, Paintingwithginger.com is, check out our website. This is one of our garden series. We've got a ton of garden series paintings and they're lovely. So if you like this kind of thing, I think this uh, 9 by 12 canvas would be one you would enjoy doing. Is that a 9 by 12? Look at the back of that. It's a 12 by 16, sorry. It's a, look bigger. Yeah, it's look way bigger. All right, so I'll just get back to our picture here, but I wanted to, to do that. All right. So now we're going to do the rocks, all right? So the first thing we, we're going to do is take the rock with a burnt umber, maybe some shadow green burnt umber, and let's just paint a rock in. And we know we've got a rock right here. Got something behind us like this. And have some rocks in front. So rocks are defined, and then here's some burnt uh, uh, sienna rocks, maybe with a little bit of that yellow in it. Not as dark, but we're gonna say we're gonna rock here. So your rocks are defined. Let's take a little zinc white and make another rock right here. Or with a light, you paint rocks by adding light. Start with the dark color, and then you add the light to the top of the rock, and that's how you paint the rock, okay? So you sort of start with the, you don't sort of, it's what you do. You start with the dark color, and then you add the, um, the, t the next color, which is the lighter color. In general, you want to have that dry. So I'm going to say we've got a rock over here. And um, maybe one here. Okay, so that's that's our basis. And then let's see. I wanted some sort of little bush here, so I'm going to take some 
uh, of that moss green, of that shadow green, and create a little bit of a, just a little bit of a, a bush there. All right, so far so good, yes and yes. Yeah, huh? Now, let's let's work on our tree a little bit too. Let's say we've got, because remember we were, uh, we just sort of sketched him in before. Okay. And if we're happy with all this, we can put in some of these other branches. Um, if we're happy with all this, but I'm not so happy yet that I'm willing to do that. So I'm not going to. I'm going to say that this is a thicker right here because it's it's like an arm, you know, it just you, your tree gets wider as it goes down, all right, to the trunk. So you don't want, like, it ate something and it's got a big bulge, like a tummy or something. And all, the branches get thinner as they go down, yeah? Everybody is good with that, okay? So let's take a little bit of yellow oxide now and a little bit of orange. And I know that I've got a branch that's going to come out like this from here. And so the under part of the this tree, remember we talked about that, right? These are going to be my under shadow colors of this pink tree. People always think if it's a pink tree, it just must all be pink. Not so. Maybe, many, many colors. Yeah, it's a little bit of orange that's coming under here. I know I want something light up in here. Take a little bit of orange and zinc white, maybe, a cadmium orange. Do something like coming up here like that. So we're going to add, I'm letting the rocks dry, okay? Now, as we come up further, we have a little bit of the raw umber. And we're going to say that there's some shadow. Um, colors up in here like that. And then as we go up higher, because we're getting toward the light, right, we might go up into some yellows, but we're not going to see too much. Let's wipe the brush off. Kind of orange and yellow oxide, maybe. We're going to say here's some of our darker colors up here. Now, can you go back and add more? Yes. So we'll come down in here like that, because we know that there's darker colors in here like this close to the um, this side of the tree because all the darker colors are under here and you can see how it's sort of taking shape can't you now it didn't really look like it before um, you want to make a point of um, Drawing between layers. And I'm going to take some zinc white and it gets a little bit lighter once going up this way. All right. Now, yeah, you think our rocks are dry? Let's see, we've got a branch coming this way. Let's just do something a little more shadowy right in here. All right, so far so good, yes and yes. All right, shadow, light color. So let's take some light white and uh, cad yellow, cadmium orange, and just say here's the Here's a light on the titanium white and cat orange, okay? Okay, and there's the, the highlight on this. Um, I might want a little bit on this um, on this um, tree branch, maybe here. Two, so a little bit more white paint with this. All right, and we got something lighter over here. Something light back there. Put 
little of this color down here. Now, as long as I'm doing it, I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow color in here, like this, underneath this area. That's just that shadow green color with some romber. Let it come under here and just do that. There's a little light on that rock. So you don't have to do a lot. You just have to show contrast, and which I know you can do. And if you lose a little bit of the white, you can come back and add it sometimes. Just come back and add a bit of white if you need to, like that. Just remember, wherever the white is, it's going to bring your eye. So you've got to use it judiciously. Does that make sense? But this is a lot of little layers of color. Okay. So speaking of layers of color, let me show you another painting. Um, this was... This probably took me three days to paint, which is really long for me. And it just made me happy painting it. And this is called The Day at the Races. And I love the, all the impressions, all impressionistic, almost, it's not really abstract, it's more what you call impressionistic painting with the, the, the main figure with the, the, with the number seven. Uh, the little car is, is, is the center of interest, focal point, and everybody else is just parts of little dots of paint to create that. This is going to be 12 by 24. That's going to be released this summer in the Academy. I absolutely think this is one of my famous uh, favorite summer paintings. And, uh, so if you remember the days when you had kids out there pushing little cars down a hill and you know, this is something that's sort of global. We didn't put any kind of flag back here because it could be anybody's country's flag. We just suggested that uh, you could personalize this a little bit. And we, we think this is going to be, uh, we hope this will be a new Academy favorite. And of course, you can buy this as a standalone downloadable lesson too. And if you're interested in the original, contact use the contact us for John and I, and we can quote you a price if you'd like to own my original painting. Hopefully it'll be in the gallery by the time we air oh. those. Okay, so everybody's so far so good? Yes and yes? Looking good so far. All right, so... Um, hey, shouldn't we thank the moderators for being here? Yeah, we really should. Uh, thank you. I mean, what the heck, moderator? I think that's really nice, and um, um, we appreciate that very much. I'm going to get out another color. Which color? Well, well, let's see. Let's see what we can do with shadow green and bright yellow. I don't think much, but let's see. Oh, let's take a yellow light. Oh, we can. Look at that. See? Look at that. Okay, mostly yellow, though, but... That's all right. Oh, nice. So I'm going to say I've got something. <gasps> yes. And then I want something brighter over here. Just as there's not too much of this. It's a little bit of... Just a tiny bit of color here, and let's get the... Let's put some blue with that and make the little bit of, here's a little bit of green here. So we don't have much in the way of green, but we do have one small green plant in there. And just for a little bit of color surprise, green and uh, uh, red are complements. And so this um, doesn't hurt to have a little bit of that somewhere. All right, so let's see, where's my little bit of burnt sienna? Burnt sienna is another color that's very translucent. Kind of it means that you can kind of see through it. And so that's a good color to, as opposed to say burnt umber, which is um, like a, you can't, it's very opaque, okay? So, all right, so everybody's good with this, right? So far, so good. Okay, so what do we got here? All right, here's our little zero uh, D brush. It's a zero, it's a really little. We're gonna take white and uh, pink and um, more white and a little tiny bit of raw umber to it because we wanna just dull it down just a bit. Kind of a, we're gonna come in here like this
and make these little splotches of color. Really pretty painting. Well, we don't think we've ever taught this style specifically on how to paint something like this. We haven't done that. Um, we take a little magenta in that pink. We have a little bit deeper color. See that? Remember I talked to you about when you're painting that the darker colors are underneath. So we want to have that some of that color. And it's just, the cherry blossom trees are fabulous, aren't they? And, um, I'm going to just, I need this to be lighter, so I'm going to go over it with white and dry it and come back with pink. Does that make sense? It does, doesn't Because it? I need this to be whiter. So just, um, I want some titanium white, and I'll come back and cover that up. Once I've got a pattern of white that I want to indicate. And when you're doing light pink over, say, dark green, it's not going to be light enough. Does that make sense? So that's why I want to make sure I have that. I'll dry that. All right. But I know I want some white in here, too, anyway. So this is a good way to bring in the white. As long as I'm doing white, let's turn our our painting here like that and just come right up to this tree. See? Then take a little bit of color and blend that out. So it's just there it is. See? Because what you want to what we're creating here is um kind of a focal point and we're just playing with the lights and darks and you want to do this over wet paint so it's a little bit of burnt sienna over that white see see how we've got these marvelous shadow colors we haven't really I can't we don't really I like to do things on um, YouTube that we haven't done before I think sometimes that's fun and um, sometimes you can just take a little bit of a little bit of paint like raw umber and a little bit of zinc white or something like that. You can create something pretty pretty spectacular. And um, that's what we're going for. Spectacular, simple but spe spectacular. Yes. Absolutely. Yes and yes. Okay, so let's just say that's a little lighter right there. All these colors. Which I personally, and you know us, we love colors. It's all about the color. Um, if um, Where are we right now, John, as far as our travels are? Oh, we're bouncing around the ocean somewhere, I'm thinking. Let's bring up the old calendar and have a looky-loo, looky as it were. This is July 3rd, so happy 4th of July if you're in the USA for tomorrow. July 3rd, we are, <clears throat> well, we just got on the Holland, Holland America ship. We're heading towards Norway, so we're at sea today. We'll be at Norway tomorrow. And this is our ship back to Boston. So we're heading home. Okay, that was that little bit of the CAD, CAD, um, CAD, red light and, and white. Just a little bit of that, not too much. Don't overdo it. Okay, we've put it down here on the ground here. So you see all the colors that we've layered in here? So all right, it's so back into our pinks. The magenta, so let's do magenta and white too. That's a good color. More white with that. 
So if you didn't have luminous rose, of course you could just use magenta. Okay. But there's something special about that luminous rose. They're just that occasionally, like for instance, I, the only place I used this on that race car where the where the number was, the only thing, time I used one of the luminous colors was on the number, which was way cool, right? It was very cool. All right, I think that's not quite dry. It's all right, we've got other places to put color. Because remember, the darker colors are where? Underneath. And the lighter colors are on top. Dark to light. Dark to light, and then and the shout, where the, where's the light coming from? There is, why is it lighter on top? It's because the light is coming from them. And anytime you you layer like this, and I'm putting this paint on pretty thick right now. But there's some real thought to where this is going. Do you see what I mean? The brush is moving very quickly. And you just got to vary the shape so you just don't have a kind of a an ice cream cone top. So you want to vary the shape on your paints. Yeah, don't make it look like it's been cut like a hedge. Yeah. Like the gardener's got out there and made it perfect. As, as your scissor hands got a hold of that. Remember him? <laughs> okay. So this is where, you know, I look at that thinking, well, I need a little bit of gold right here maybe, or a little bit of orange or a little bit something darker right in here. Maybe down in here. And then I want to dry it one more time, at least, at least one more time, uh, to get to get the um, oh, that this white where I can put this pink, right? So I want a little bit of this gold color up here, like that. A little bit of orange in it. Too much. See how we're layering the colors? Yes and yes. And we're starting to go. Uh, something a little darker here. This is where you've got to play with your values too. Because um, uh, when it dries, it may look differently than as you were happily painting it. You may have thought you were doing splendidly and discovered, oh gosh, I wasn't. I thought I was doing so good and I wasn't. So the nice thing about um, when you're painting a, a painting like this and you've got all these colors that you're putting in the uh, the tree, here's some of this orange that's coming through here like that. It's a, you're doing a pattern. You're creating a bit of a pattern. That's what you're making. And, um, Here's a little bit of that green color. There, okay. So what I need to do now is um, I'll dry this, but let me just give you a hint. Um, this is a, let me find this for you. This card is called Neutral Gray. This is a neutral gray card. And when you do a painting like this, you're going to start to go a little cross-eyed with all the colors. Stop for about a full minute and just stare at a gray card. A little darker light. Just stare at something. Stare at something gray. Now come back and look at your colors, and you'll see where you're missing stuff. It resets okay. your eyeballs. It resets your eyes, just like it does your camera. All 
All right, and just definitely reset your eyes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is dry that. But I wanted to show you this because I thought that was just, you'll always learn some little trick with us um, anytime we, we do a YouTube show. We're trying to show something that maybe you hadn't thought about. So um, just a reminder, we will be in Pennsylvania the 15th of uh, August. We'll be at Starting the street, and I think that there'll probably be, if there's a, I think, I don't know if they've announced the meet and greet yet, but if you can't, if we may already be sold out by this time for the, for the um, uh, retreat, there may, uh, but you check because you, cause sometimes people cancel, stuff happens, and you still may be able to, to join that retreat uh, workshop with Cinnamon and I. Uh, the art sherpa and and that's fabulous but i think there will even be maybe a later a meet and greet where you could maybe uh meet you know get a chance to have uh, some time with the Simon and jai just for an afternoon and um the family and everything so uh check your schedule too all right so did this dry all right it did so now what i want is a pattern remember i told you i wanted sort of a grayed pink right so I think I've got that kind of a gray light pink. Could you slide yourself a little bit to the right? Thank you very much. Yeah, let's just move this over here. So it's just the gray pink is, you know, it's either um, like brown in it or um, uh, okay, black or something. Let's see. I had too much water on the brush. It was sitting in the wall water and you've got to make sure that you get that off. So let's start again with the color mixing. I want some uh, pink and put a little, put, I put a little green in that. That's interesting. And then white. So that, that will gray that pink. Um, it's like a dusty pink. Does that make sense? It's dusty. So this is like a little bit larger area of color and I'll break this up again with some dark but and let's see if there's other places I want this color Magenta, sometimes you can do a little stronger one then. And the other thing you can do is you can add a little orange to this color and um, just a little bit of cadmium orange and, and rose and, um, and the luminous rose and white, and you get a um, you get a more of a peach. And that never hurts when you're painting something to add a few little bits of different colors. I want something a little darker right up here. Just in a couple of places, I want a little bit brighter color in this tree. All right, maybe down in here. So I'm going to, now we'll go back and... Um, Put the the darks um, greens back in here because I didn't want I really didn't want to lose those but um, you know sometimes you do and that's all right. Let's see. You can that's always put them back. You can always put the colors back. Okay. Just a little bit of yellow oxide. 
just in a couple of places. Now I'm going to dry that, put the darks back, and put the branches on. All right. Immerse yourself in the unique features that set our online acrylic painting academy apart from the rest. We understand that every artist's journey is personal and individual, which is why we offer personal art coaching with master acrylic artist Ginger Cook. This invaluable service allows students to email photos of their artwork in progress or completed pieces, receiving constructive feedback and helpful suggestions that will elevate their skills and enhance their artistic development. Our personal art coaching, also known as PACS, goes a step further with personalized short videos known as video packs. In these custom-made video responses, Ginger addresses the specific needs of each student, providing tailored guidance on their unique artwork based on personal references and photos. Our Academy library is constantly evolving, with new releases reflecting the most up-to-date and desired painting subjects our students are eager to learn. In 2023, we've expanded our offerings to include portraits, people, and more, such as painting design instructions for our Purple members. Our diverse curriculum delves into the past with tutorials on classic art from world-renowned artists like Van Gogh and Renoir, while also embracing modern trends in decor and subject matter. Students will have the opportunity to explore various styles such as realism, impressionism, romanticism, and stylized art. Each student is made to feel special and valued through our one-on-one -on -one personal art coaching, available at red, blue, and purple membership levels. With the art coaching option starting at under $50 a month, our Academy is the most unique and accessible online art school available. Embark on a transformative artistic journey with our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, located at paintingwithginger.com, where every student is given the tools, resources, and personalized attention they need to thrive and excel. Let us help you unleash your creative potential and turn your passion into breathtaking masterpieces. Okay, so let's take a small little angle brush and get into the dark green and burn umber. All right, you ready? Make sure you don't, if your brush is sitting in water, make sure it doesn't, it's not leaking water. And the, all right, so you watch, all right, ready for this? Using just the corner of this brush now, I'm creating sort of a zigzag pattern of that dark green. And you see what a difference that makes. But you can't do this over wet because then you just you won't have the dark green anymore. Now look at the contrast we're bringing out just on this left side of the tree. All right, so that's that's way cool, isn't it? Now, one of the things you can do is that um, if you're having trouble, this is called Golden Van Dyke Brown, and I'm going to just, um, and it's in a fluid form, and I want to do some very fluidy branches. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, really shake this up well, and... Never used it before. I would not open too. that. Don't open that over the painting. Huh? Don't open that over the painting. Oh yeah, don't open it over the painting. Good thinking, John. <laughs> he doesn't think I should open it over the painting. I He's, know you and paint. You just need to have this bond. A little heart attack here, right? All right, let's just let's just pour it in this little container here. That's dry, so don't be freaked out, people. Yeah, that's dry. I just 
never have enough of these disposable whatever these things are. So all right, so I want I want a liner brush. Say something like this. That's wet. I can use a brush like that. Do you see how I'm doing that with the with the um I'll just show you some different ways to do branches. Um, sometimes it's easier to pull a branch towards you than it is to um, uh, to, to come up with one. So I'm going to come oh, like would, this. Would definitely make it easy on your body and have better control over it. So that's one way you can do it. Um, you could bring it up like this. Skip a space because remember it's hiding behind the leaves. Yes and yes. And this this branch is a main one here. You don't want it. You don't want to overdo it with the branches. You want enough to give it an idea there's a tree. Now, if I don't have fluid, what can I do? Uh, water down the paint. Okay. Be one thing you could do. Um, Some people might want to use a medium. Yep, you could of use water. maybe a medium. You could use a um, um, a, uh, a uh, you could use another brush that the, um, could use a dagger brush for this. But these are designed for long, skinny branches. All right, uh, a uh, a paint a brush like this that's what they're designed for is these long skinny branches when you do a, a you don't make a Y like this if you have a of a tree trunk coming up here and you've got a branch coming here then you've got to stagger it don't don't make a Y all right so if I wanted one coming off at of this direction now um, see, I'd move it, I wouldn't put it opposite that, I'd move it up or down a little bit to make sure that it wasn't doing that, okay? And, uh, all right, so I, and also I could say that there were uh, some branches growing up here like this. The harder you push, the fatter the branch. When you lift up like that, you can have something coming up like this. And it may be over here too, just to suggest that there was something growing here like that. Like that. So you've got, um, just gives yourself a little bit of of depth for this, and I feel like this tree could be. Um, I want to change. I want to add a little bit of color to it, so I might take a little bit of the same brush and just maybe take a little yellow oxide or something like this to the tree. Uh, a little zinc white and yellow oxide if I want something a little lighter on the tree. Just barely touch it. So that's um, probably uh, probably the best explanation I think I have on. Do you think that's a good one, John? I think, to... Yeah, absolutely. All 
All right, so you don't, you can, those little bottles will last you a long time because generally speaking, you don't. Um, you don't use a lot of it. You don't use a lot of it. No, so we're going to say that there's a little bit of a something back here. A little bit of something lighter on one of these rocks. Like that. I'm just saying that there's that, yeah. Now, what you can do is you can, um, we'll put that one away. We'll take a small brush like this and just take some titanium white and come up now and let's add some light up here like that with a little dagger brush. See what I'm doing? That's a little baby modeling dagger brush. Yes, a little modeling brush. and we, we love these. Now, isn't it interesting what that did to the, what that does to the, um, the tree? Look at that. And I can take that same brush and say I want to come up here like that. And um, you notice I've got quite a space in here where there's no flowers. All right? Do you see that? But I'll bring something out sort of to the right here. Um, I'm just kind of creating a light pink color here, and I'm going to come out this way with the tree a little bit like that, okay? And uh, So this, I think, is a real good example of, um, how, you know, so notice it's just some little thick and thin leaves. You don't have to, you know, or petals or you just, you have a few little dots. This is, so don't be heavy handed. Some of you all want to make the same size dots and don't do that. Hey, don't put them all in a row, you stock folders. We know who you are. Yeah, and I, for instance, I think I could almost have this tree be a little bit thicker right here, so I can just, I can do that with that branch right there. And, um, uh, let's take some of this pink. And little tiny dots like that. Break this up. Yeah. Do that. And I think I want something darker right up in here. You can always come back and add dark. And then I want to have a little bit of light coming across here like that. Bring this tree this way on the right-hand side. There we go. And I think I have to go back into the white here. Do a little bit more white here. Birds should be able to fly through your tree. Without hitting a brick wall, so to speak. Huh? Without hitting a brick wall. Yeah, exactly. So. We'll make a little bit more color right there. Wow, that you've really got a... Um, yeah, a nice looking cherry You've blossom. You've got a nice cherry blossom tree, don't you think? I think so. I think 
you have that too. I'm going to make that a little darker. Then let's just, you know me, I want something a little darker in the corner right here. And down here at the bottom too, we'll just do something a little darker. So a little bit of burnt sienna, and brown. Make this a little bit darker right here. You darken the corners to bring your eyes in to where the uh, I want some pink um, I think I want some pink petals on the ground. What do you think? I think it would be an excellent idea. I think that there would be. I'm sorry to just in my little universe of course there would be someone even be falling. Ooh. Caught in midair. That's a tree with action, man. When you've got some falling like that, then you've created an action picture. <laughs> Should we have the action lines like we do in cartoons? Yeah, you, yeah, but you, 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 you have a. See, I mean, you when you've when you said that happened. All kinds of things happen. And then cross over some of your branches if you've got too many, sticking up here just. You know, cross over a couple like that. Um, I'm very happy with this painting. I think it's, it has an oriental feel to it to me. You too? Yes, very much so. You kind of feel that? And yet it's very nice here. There's a color called um, um, Azo Gold. By, uh, color. by um, it's sort of a translucent raw sienna that would have been nice on this front area too, but I don't see it, so I guess we won't do it. Oh, it's just well, pause it for a minute. I'll go find it. You go find it. Yeah, pause it. All right. Okay, so we, we found the the paint. I I found the it's, it's aso gold or this is uh, this particular one is. Uh, is uh, Australian sienna, but what I wanted is just you do that with water. That is the marigold's almost okay for that too, but you. No, this is, this is a lot more translucent though. It's yeah, the the marigold, and you just kind of, kind of warm up the little light spots you've got like that. See, and it's just it's an interesting. Um, it's 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 an interesting thing. You can take that and just. Um, you can warm up a few little light spots that you still want to maybe have the color there, but maybe not completely white. You can warm those up in a couple places. See, like that for the tree, and see how that works. And then I still want to have a little bit of this. I just suggest there's a little bit of these, the shadow stuff here. Almost done here, you guys. I just, you know me, I like to. <laughs> the final touches. I yeah, I want to just say that. This so, well, hey, while she's doing these final touches, if you haven't subscribed yet, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing. It does wonders for us. It helps us get known by other other people that are interested in acrylic painting. Hit that thumbs up as well while you're down there. We do appreciate that. Share it. Share our videos with others. Let them know that we're around. Just a little bit of gray right there. Yeah, I I would say that we're we have got. Um, we've got a painting. We've got a really kind of a cool painting, I think. You've got this beautiful white color here. That's just a bit of just pure white by the rocks. And then really white right there. Just a couple of places where you have exaggerated where the white goes. Okay. And see, so you bring your, bring, kind of bring your eye back through here like that. And uh, I want to lighten up this little bit of grass right there. I got some, some just bright green, but you could add more yellow to that too. Just something a little brighter just to give the painting just a little tiny bit of color and the same thing with the cadmium orange. I just wanna 
just have a little bit of that bright color. Just sometimes, you know, it's it's funny, but you can do just a little, few little tiny things, few touches, and you've really got a neat painting. And let me just show you how cool this is. And this is a very different way of painting this um, cherry blossom tree. But let me put the yeah, frame let's, on let's for you. that baby up. And, uh, and I, I think it's just, it says spring, it says happiness. Doesn't it say happiness to you? It does. It's just small stuff like that, but it, it says happiness to me. Um, That's a happy tree. Yeah, maybe it's just a little bit more of the bright orange right over here. Like that, because it just, again, that's what it says to me. That's when I see it there. Well, I'm going to sign it. I think this is one of those ones where you, you remember that the darker colors are underneath the light coming from the top. That's where the light uh, colors are going to be on your tree. And uh, I th the branches are get thinner as they go out. You can use um, a flow paint to, uh, to create a, a thin line. If you can't get that, you can... Um, there are some acrylic paint pens that are thinner, but most of them, I haven't found one that I find all that great for trees. But for instance, the Posca pen makes a very light brown, which you could do some background, but you don't want to get this too too busy. You want to sit there and say, what can I do that won't take away the, you know, won't ruin the effect? You know that rocks will get lighter because the light's on top. Um, Wow, there's a, there was a lot in this video. I want to thank our mods for hanging out with us. And for those of you who um, uh, donated to our scholarship fund, again, we want to thank you for that. Uh, that makes it, you know, that really helps us. You know, I, I, we appreciate it. We know inflation's gotten to everybody, and it's certainly uh, challenged us as well. And we're even though we're, we're traveling, this trip that we were on now was planned way during covid and so we were lucky to be able to uh, take it, uh, but but uh, uh, and see the world while there's still a world left to see. And we hope that uh, That's the truth. if we're around anywhere to, where you are, that maybe uh, we'll get to run into you too. So thanks for watching. I want to make sure that I have signed it. Uh, that probably a gold pen would be. Cute. I was going to suggest gold on this. John was thinking gold, and I'm thinking I'm thinking gold too, aren't you? This really feels almost like a. It almost feels like a watercolor, doesn't it, the way it's done? Yes, very close to it. Well, see, I need a dark spot to paint, to write it, maybe right here. I'm, that's what I'm thinking, right there. You're thinking about that? Either that, that or the other side right in the darkness. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, I'd go there. There. So there's there, and then we'll put the red slash through it. Thanks for watching, you guys. Don't forget... Um, that I love love seeing your paintings, and if you become a member of our free Facebook club, you can share what you're painting with us, and we love to see that. It's inspiring to us, and appreciate your comments after the video. And if we are in the live chat, I hope you enjoyed chatting with us. If if for some reason we didn't have enough internet in Norway to be able to do that, then we're sorry, but we hope we're <laughs> with you tonight. Okay, so we'll talk to you soon, and thanks for coming. Thanks everybody. See you next time. Bye. Step into a world of vibrant colors and dazzling designs at Ginger Cook's Art and Gift Shop, where we've transformed the captivating artwork of the renowned artist Ginger Cook into a delightful array of merchandise that you'll simply adore. From t-shirts to mugs, purses, and even puzzles, our unique offerings showcase Ginger's artistic flair and are bound to bring a touch of whimsy and joy to your everyday life. Don't miss out on the chance to own a piece of this extraordinary collection. Visit our store at gingersartandgiftshop.com today. Our t-shirts, which are available in an assortment of sizes and styles, feature Ginger Cook's signature paintings that will have you wearing your heart on your sleeve, quite literally. Each tee is a walking canvas, allowing you to express your personality and passion for art in the most fashionable way possible. Pair them with your favorite jeans, and you're ready to make a statement that's as bold and striking as Ginger's masterpieces. But that's not all. Our mugs, adorned with Ginger's mesmerizing artwork, are perfect for sipping your morning coffee or tea while immersing yourself in the creative genius of her captivating world. These functional pieces of art will serve as a constant reminder 
to see the beauty every day and will undoubtedly become your go-to mugs for your daily dose of caffeine and inspiration. Our purses are not only stylish, but also a practical way to carry a piece of Ginger Cook's art wherever you go. Available in various sizes and designs, these purses are the ultimate blend of fashion and functionality, ensuring that you'll always have a conversation starter right at your fingertips. And for those who love a good challenge, our puzzles featuring Ginger Cook's artwork are a fantastic way to spend an evening while getting to know her art even more intimately. Put together the pieces to reveal her stunning creations and let the beauty of her work unfold before your eyes. These puzzles make for great gifts or indulgent treats for yourself, so why wait? Head over to gingersartandgiftshop.com now and explore the fantastic world of Ginger Cook's art-inspired merchandise. Bring home a piece of this whimsical wonderland and let Ginger's artwork brighten up your life.